Magwana ni mwalelepo, fugenja ni krekwas, wanawe Africa. Welcome to Africa. Good morning. The news and current affairs show bringing you everything you need to know happening on the African continent and beyond. You are joined by Ashwin Berry and Diana Master. The Easter break is over. The back-to-back -back long weekends are over. Mm -hmm. uh, people's bank balances are breathing sighs of relief <laughs> and our life is normal again. <laughs> our life is normal again. But like you said, no more holidays. Like very few holidays now very going few. I forward. think there's one more long weekend. <coughs> which is mm -hmm. going to be 26 August. Um, I believe that's Heroes Day. Yeah. Let the cat out the bag. We still Jeez. have one more. It's a good year for us, guys. I mean, <laughs> sure, sure. We'll go with that. Yeah. All right, now let's get into what you can expect in today's broadcast. Madagascar cyclone Gamani kills at least 18 and displaces thousands. Police arrest 15 more people for University of Fort Hare killings. And Gaba family denies allegations of a role in AKA's murder. A little later on in the show, we'll be bringing you fresh news from Zambia with Mike Suchula. But for now, we'll be taking a quick ad break and getting into our top stories when we get back. stories a tropical cyclone that swept across the island of madagascar killed at least 18 people and displaced thousands more the country's disaster management office said on friday tropical cyclone gamane which crossed the northeast of madagascar on wednesday and thursday displaced more than 20,000 people the national bureau of risk and disaster management said in a report three others were injured and four were still missing it added gamane made landfall north of vohema in northeast madagascar on wednesday morning with an average of winds of 150 kilometers per hour and gusts of 210 kilometers per hour, BNGRC said late on Thursday. It slowly dissipated on Thursday afternoon while still over land, the disaster management office said, having dumped heavy rain and caused flooding in many localities. Now in South Africa, police have made a major breakthrough and arrested 15 more people in connection with the killings at the University of Fort Hare. Police spokesperson Brigadier Atlenda Mate confirmed the national task assigned with the responsibility of investigating and arresting those responsible for murder and attempted murder cases at the University of Fort Hare arrested on Sunday. This brings the number of those arrested in this case to 25 suspects. The suspects were arrested in various provinces over the Easter weekend, including Gauteng, the Eastern and Western Cape, as well as kwazulu Natal. They are expected to make their first court appearance on Tuesday, the 2nd of April 2024, at the Dimbaza Magistrates Court in the Eastern Cape. The National Commissioner of the SUBS, General Fani Masamola, said the task team will continue to do their work without fear or favor. Now, South Africa's influential Kaba family has denied speculation of one of its members being involved in the murder of popular rap artist, AKA. AKA, real name Kenan Forbes, and his close friend Tibbs Motswane were shot dead outside a restaurant in Durban in February last year. Last Wednesday, prosecutors in the trial of the rap artist's suspected killers implicated Sidney Mfundo Kaba, a member of the Kaba family, in the rapper's killing. A statement presented to court by the investigating officer alleged that one of Mr. Kaba's company sent over 800,000 rand to the bank account of Mzwe Temba Havi Gwabeni, one of the suspects being tried for the rap artist's murder. Now, Indonesia's president-elect Prabowo Subianto is expected to meet Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing for high-level talks less than two months after winning the race to lead Southeast Asia's biggest economy. Prabowo is visiting at Xi's invitation to discuss two-way ties, even though the 72-year-old political veteran will only be sworn in as the next leader of Southeast Asia's most populous nation in October. China becomes the first foreign nation Prabowo has visited as president-elect, ahead of Indonesia's neighbors in the region, underlining the close 
close partnership built up in the past decade under his predecessor, Joko Widodo. In contrast, Jokowi, as the incumbent Indonesian leader is also known, did not travel abroad as president-elect after being sworn in, but Jokowi's first visit after his inauguration was to China for an annual summit of Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation leaders in 2014. That was followed by six more through 2023. China has become Indonesia's top trading partner during the last decade, as its natural resources such as coal and nickel help to power the world's second largest economy. Now, between today and Friday, Angola will host the third edition of Africa's most prominent space event, the New Space Africa 2024 Conference, a high-level meeting of African and foreign industry leaders, commercial space companies, investors, and other stakeholders in the space and satellite industry, which will take place under the theme, The Role of Space in Reducing the Poverty Gap in Africa. For four days, more than 400 delegates from 46 countries from six continents will converge at the Talatona Convention Center in Luanda. The event jointly organized by Space in Africa, the African Union Commission and the National Space Program Management Office of Angola under the auspices of the Ministry of Telecommunications, Information Technologies and Social Communication will provide an opportunity for participants to explore the potential impact of cooperation frameworks between stakeholders to achieve common goals across the industry and the continent. Those have been our top stories on Africa. Good morning. After the break, we talk to Mike Sichula in Zambia. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neopaints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neopaints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. All right, it's time for us to talk to Mike Sichula. Mike Wudimwanji. All right, as we wait for Mike Citrilla to join us, let's talk about some of the top stories from Zambia. Authorities have arrested a traditional leader for the offense of cutting down trees in a restricted area. We know that Zambia takes its deforestation very seriously. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of Africa really cares about the environment. And as much as some of these things might be a necessity, there is a way uh, to get things done. And of course, licenses are usually required in order to cut down trees. Now, on a rather sad note, two people have died while one survived after the earth collapsed on them this was whilst conducting mining activities and unfortunately Zambia had a very similar story with trapped miners just last month the president Akande Chilema doing his best to spare on the efforts of saving those miners and this is yet another tragedy in the country we'll be waiting to see what the government's response has been to that now police officer in eastern Zambia has been detained on accusations of theft from a journalist we'll get into that story and more it seems like Mike is here Mike Muribwanji. Jiribu, you know, Muribwanji, Africa, good morning to our dear viewers. Africa, good morning indeed. All right, now, Mr. Sishila, getting right into the first of your stories, as Ashwin briefly highlighted earlier. Authorities have arrested a traditional leader for the offense of cutting down trees in a, in a restricted area. Do tell us more. The traditional leader who is currently on police bond was arrested after the Central Joint Operation Committee discovered that he was encroaching in the game restricted area where he was cutting timber. Then uh, uh, the, 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 the committee was headed by Minister of Economic and uh, Environmental Minister Colin Zinjov, who says that investigations by officers from the Forestry Department revealed overwhelming evidence of Chief Chikwanka's involvement in the allegedly illegal sale of timber. So this is coming about because government is now very tough on the cutting down of trees because of effects of its effects on climate change. So this one is one of the biggest cases that the forest department uh, in the joint operations has actually uh, uh, made to arrest a leader, Chief Chikwa Chikwanka of the Senga people in uh, Chama district of Eastern Province. 
All right, uh, Micah, let's move on to your story, uh, a rather sad story, as the earth collapsed on three individuals with two of them dying. Yeah, this was, uh, the, actually, they were, according to police, they are, they, are saying, they are saying the deceased are two, two illegal miners, while one was survived after the earth collapsed on them as they were conducting mining activities as at COP5 KCM dump site in Chingola, that is the Copper Belt District. So police have identified the victims as Prince Chirumba, aged 19, Collins in Kwato, aged 20, while the survivor, uh, Jackson Ilunga, complained of general occupants. So these cases are now happening, have happened in Zambia most, most in the past weeks and months, where uh, the, the, let, the first was uh, 22 miners, then the current now we have about five miners who are still being trapped. So these cases are happening more often and authorities want this thing to come to an end. All right, moving on. A police officer in eastern Zambia has been detained on accusations of theft from a journalist whom they arrested for alleged loitering. So this case happened uh, where this journalist was found at one of the drinking places in Chadiza district of eastern province. So when police were closing up these drinking places, he more or less had, had, had an, uh, an argument with them. Then they ended up arresting him for saying you are blocking police from carrying out their lawful duties. So he works for the private media institution called Prime Television here in Zambia. So when they took him to the police station, it is reported that one of the police officers went to his car, uh, the company car that this journalist was using, and broke into that car and stole items worth 180 This is roughly below $5. So police have since uh, detained this officer on accusation of theft, and uh, they are trying to investigate whether that is true and why he did what he did. Meanwhile, the, the, the journalist was also detained because he blocked police from carrying out their lawful duty. My goodness, double detention. All right, in sports, netball under-21 team, it will be camped in Europe ahead of the World Cup in Gibraltar. Tell us more. Yeah, so Zambia, during this tournament, uh, ripped a bronze medal at the... Uh, in, uh, so that they, they, they qualified for the World Cup. The tournament was held in, uh, uh, in South Africa. So Zambia, to qualify for the World Cup, they beat Zimbabwe 40, 41 to 43. Then, uh, because of this achievement, also Zambia won the best, uh, was awarded the for the most disciplined team and also the most promising player, that is Harriet Machuku. And uh, also because of this achievement, the Netball Association of Zambia president Martha Sichone says the players need to be to have a few of European type of netball if they are to be successful in the global competition that will be taking place earlier this year. All right. Thank you very much, Mike, for bringing us the new stories from Zambia. And congrats on that win over Zimbabwe. I know you were smirking as you were saying that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Africa, good morning. We are brothers. Uh, like them normally say that uh, we are Siamese twins, Zambia and Zimbabwe. So a win for Zambia is a win for Zimbabwe. I'll Thank you it. very much. <laughs> Africa, good morning. So I do have <laughs> All right, we'll now take a look at the weather predictions just before we get into our economic news.
Now, the African Energy Chamber said that Mozambique will play an important role in the supply of gas given the decline in production in some African countries such as Nigeria, Angola, and Equatorial Guinea. Mozambique is among the countries that bring us positive news due to the foreseeable increase in liquefied natural gas production driven by the projects under development in the Rovuma Basin, it explained. In a report entitled The State of African Energy 2024 Outlook Report, the organization described that the country is expected to increase its export capacity from the current 3.4 to around 43.5 million tons per year by the end of the next decade, the biggest increase ever. According to the document, the entry of new African countries into gas production is essential to offset the decline in current wells. Moving over to Somalia, a new crop of young and ambitious farmers and agricultural entrepreneurs are driving an agricultural revolution by introducing modern agricultural practices. Simple greenhouses allow farmers to produce fruit and vegetables all year round, increasing food security for the residents of Mogadishu. With over 250 greenhouses dotting the outskirts of Mogadishu, these farms are pivotal in ensuring a consistent food supply to Somalia's capital. The country has experienced extreme weather in recent years with prolonged drought and devastating floods. Somalia's food security has also been hit by the actions of militant groups like al-Shabaab. Only in the past few weeks has Somalia begun to find its footing after three decades of chaos brought by warlords and extremist groups. All right, we're going to head over to the economic indicators just before Ari Hohad brings us the sport. Good day everyone, time for international sports news, starting off with soccer news first, that is from the English Premier League. Um, after the weekend soccer, it is uh, close at the top, with the top three teams very close to each other. After 29 games, it is Liverpool on 67 points, then followed by Arsenal on 65, and then followed by Manchester City, the defending champions, on 64. There will be midweek games this week and uh, all three teams in action on Wednesday. It will be Arsenal that will be at home against Luton and then Manchester City they will be at home against Aston Villa that's also on Wednesday. On Thursday it will be lock leaders Liverpool that will be at home against Sheffield Wednesday. Just nine games left in the season and on Sunday the 7th a very important game for Liverpool. They travel to Manchester United uh, that is for their next league game after Wednesday. And continuing international sports news with golf news, um, it is from the LPGA, the Ladies Golf PGA. And news uh, from that is that Nelly Korda won the Ford Championship in Arizona, and that was quite significant. She, that is the, her third consecutive win on the LPGA, and uh, it's not been done many times before. It was Nelly Korda that uh, played a last round of 65, that was 7 under par. That's for a total of 20 under par to win the tournament. And in second position was Hira Navid of Australia on 18 under par, and then on 17 under par Lexi Thompson of the USA. It is an helicopter that continued to be the world number one player on the world rankings.
On the men's tour, on the PGA Tour, it was Steven Jaeger of Germany that won the Houston Open and he won it uh, by one shot over Scotty Scheffler. It was uh, Jaeger that had a total of minus 12. That was after closing with a 67 for his final round. And then Scotty Scheffler, um, he came in with a minus 11 total for his four rounds. It is still Scotty Scheffler that remain the number one golfer in the world on the men's golf rankings. And to close off today's international sports news, it is women's cricket and the first from New Zealand. It is England touring New Zealand and it's England that won this, the first 50 over international by four wickets and that was played in Wellington at the Basin Reserve. New Zealand scoring 207 in 48.2 overs and uh, then it was England 209 for the loss of six wickets and it was Amy Jones with 92 runs uh, that was the star batsman for England. The next game, the second game, will be played on Wednesday in Hamilton. Then in South Africa, it was South Africa that host Sri Lanka. That was in the second T20 international. South Africa won the first one and Sri Lanka won the second one by seven wickets over the weekend. It was South Africa that scored 137 for eight in their allotted 20 overs. Sri Lanka replied by 138 for the loss of three wickets. And it was a good run scored by Vishmi Kunataratna. And she scored 65 runs unbeaten. That was for Sri Lanka. The third and final T20 International, the Decider, will be played in East London in South Africa at Buffalo Park and that will be played on Wednesday. That's international sports news for today. Hope you have a great sport day and we talk international sport again tomorrow. Goodbye. So that we are fed. You're still with Africa. Good morning, but for those of you that are just joining us, let's take a look at the highlights. Madagascar cyclone Gamane kills at least 18 and displaces thousands. Voters choose a new president after a police... Excuse me, let me take that again. Police arrest 15 more people for University of Fort Hay killings. And an update on the African Energy Chamber. Mozambique will play an important role in Africa's gas supply. Those have been our top stories, the highlights at least on Africa. Good morning from Diana Master and Ashwin Berry, Suresh Kanaka.